Hi everybody, Dr. Ben Shamoyle, the LA Chiropractor right here in Century City. We are gonna dive into my new series on post-concussion syndrome and how uh, it has evolved in my practice. And I can't tell you what an insane difference it's made uh, to the patients that have been coming in and how we are able to really pinpoint certain issues that uh, were not uh, uh, able to pinpoint before. I've been in practice since 1999 um, and uh, had successful practice seeing patients getting so many people well uh, not just from pain but a lot of other symptoms that they've been having such as you know headaches, uh, fatigue, dizziness, just uh, wonderful work with chiropractic and um, uh, through the years, I've always, the patients that know me, I've always been out looking to improve uh, my knowledge and really focus on how I can get people better, faster, and more holistically without the use of drugs and surgery. And so I've always been a mission um, and uh, really focusing on helping people heal themselves and, and, and get better. Um, how I got into this work is very interesting. Um, my son, uh, Z, uh, is pretty much the factor and the basis that I got into this post-concussion work. Without him, I wouldn't be here. Uh, you always have to have some kind of uh, force in, in, in your life that's going to guide you into a certain direction. And as and my daughter, Sadie, delicious, amazing, I love her. Uh, she kind of gets upset because all of these stories revolve around her older brother, Z. But I got to give it up. If it wasn't for Z uh, coming into my life, his name is Zohar. And uh, I might never have learned anything about this and been super limited in my approach to helping people resolve the issues. And not only just resolving them, find out where they came from and then correcting it. Um, so my son, when he was about two years old, uh, my wife and I were working in the backyard. We were uh, doing what we usually do, doing some gardening, a little bit older house, and the kids were napping, so we knew we had some time to ourselves of, of getting everything done. Um, lo and behold, my son gets out of his, uh, his crib and sleep area, comes out to the backyard, and living in an older house, they didn't have the, the, the railings. So when he, he stepped over, he stepped over the ledge and fell onto some concrete. And which, you know, if you've ever heard it, it's a very distinct voice when your head gets knocked on on concrete. We jumped up, we turned around, we saw that, that high pitched screaming starting to start. And we do what most parents do. We checked him, made sure that he was, uh, um, uh, you know, there's no broken bones, nothing fractured, teeth were all there, no cuts, no uh, bleeding at the time. <coughs> and you do what most parents do. <coughs> you make sure that they're great and you get some ice and put it on a bump and watch some Curious George. And uh, in no time, uh, the crying stops and you monitor and we checked and we made sure everything was okay. and. I did all the things that I knew uh, to make sure. And, and again, lo and behold, kids are resilient. Now, once that was done and once we noticed uh, that happening and within a month or two, the bruising and the bump went away. And as far as we knew, we had our kid and he's solid. Now, it wasn't until like a year later when I was around three or four running around. What, what do kids love to do? They love to be chased. Uh, we're chasing around and, and both my wife and I noticed that every time he'd start to run, he would trip within 10 steps, within five to 10 steps, he would just fall over. And it was very interesting for us to see what that was all about. Now I, I, I took him to the park <clears throat> and I chased him and sure enough, he would fall over and it's becoming more of a concern. I would make sure I would get the right shoes and all of these things that we were doing. Now, my, my children have been under chiropractic care since birth 
and <clears throat> my son was born breech, so he always had some hip issues. But um, we knew that he was getting the right care, but something else was going on. And it didn't matter whether we were at the beach in the sand or on the, at the, the park on, on the grass or regular floors. It just, now it started to really become a main, a major concern. Uh, I started to notice certain things within the house. Um, I started noticing that if I would chase him and we were going down the hall and he turned to the right, he'd be okay. But if I was chasing him and he had to turn to the left, I started to notice that he'd either bump into the wall or lose his step or kind of kind of lose his balance. I took note of that and I took him out to the park and we would chase him. I noticed that again, when he would run to the right, he had more stability, but when he would run to the left, he was bound to fall over and trip over. Now this started to bring it to my head. Okay, wow, I'm now dealing with a part of the brain that has to do with the right and left balance. This was definitely clear what was going on and I did not relate it to the fall. Uh, right now, I'm just starting to notice that uh, um, something was going on. Um, soon, the next symptom that started um, again around age four, close to five, was teeth grinding. Now, if you've ever experienced teeth grinding, whether yourself or um, uh, one of your children or your partner, it, it's horrendous, right? Um, uh, the teeth grinding, it's just, uh, it, it sounds like they're shattering their teeth. And you know what he did? There were some baby teeth that were chipped. And uh, it was so intense, it was starting to wake us up and this was go on. And it, I felt so bad, I, I, I sometimes I would wake him up just so he could stop grinding his teeth. Uh, so it was very stressful for us. I had no solution. None of my colleagues, and again, he was seeing some of the best doctors, uh, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Um, uh, Russell, uh, Dr. Reynolds. And so some of the best chiropractors and people in, in the game. And still, there was getting no changes. The grinding got worse. The balancing started to get worse. And... Uh, my wife was definitely concerned. I knew something was going on. And so what I did is I reached out to some of my colleagues, a little bit older, and I was asking them, hey, who knows concussions and who knows the brain and cerebellum the best, right? And there was only a handful of doctors and went to a local one. And <clears throat> I ended up meeting Dr. Eric Wagner, I'm sorry, Ed Wagner here. And once I met up with him, uh, we took our son there. And uh, I'm not familiar with applied kinesiology or muscle testing and anything like that at that time. I was just doing really good straight chiropractic. And when I took him there, um, he tested him really quick. He turned to us, did he have a massive fall? Did he hit his head? And we're like, of course, you know, he's five. He's fallen all over the place. He's like, no, 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 big fall, around two. And I was like, wow, that's really specific. And we're like, oh my God, yeah, he, he fell in the backyard, he hit his head. Did some work with his skull, did some work with his uh, the frontal part of his face. We told him about the grinding, all of this stuff. In about half hour, we were out. And uh, it was, a, you know, even though he's a chiropractor, it was the first time I've ever seen anything like this. I and mean, just like, it was just mind blowing. Really amazing to see. Um, so we took that, we went home that night and that was the first night and when you're used to the teeth grinding you, you're almost prepared to wake up. Uh, and I woke up that night and I'm just kind of kind of laying there and it's the usual time around 1 a.m. and uh, there was a little bit of grinding but soon stopped and it was really weird. I was like wow, okay, that was the least I've ever heard in, in the last several weeks and months. And, uh, and the next night I woke up prepared to like see what was going on. You just kind of, you have your ear out because, you know, a parent. 
And uh, the second night, there was absolutely nothing. Neither was the third night, and the fourth night, and the fifth night. And I was like, wow. And I even told my wife, I'm like, hey, uh, teeth grinding is kind of stopped. Well, it stopped all completely. I, we we couldn't believe it. I was I was mesmerized. Uh, we ended up um, going back for a follow up visit a week later, and I was like, "Hey, doc, um, teeth grinding stopped. You know, he seems to have better balance." And and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I fixed it all. You shouldn't have any problem." And I was like, "What do you What do you mean? You fixed it all? What's going on? What are you doing?" And your son had a concussion. This is how it affected his nerve system. It didn't matter what you did here. It's not happening. It's happening up into the brain. And one of the few people that could ever fix this concussion. This is my work and I've been working on it for 40 years. I'm like, great. Ah, this is what I'm looking for. You got to teach me. It's like, I can't. I don't have time to teach you. He couldn't. There was an hour wait. Uh, even if you got there at your time, and it was notorious as a wait because he's so thorough, and uh, it's not about uh, uh, making sure he's on time. It's about him correcting the issue. And uh, I came back, and I got some work done on myself, and I, I was like, "You got to teach us this." And he gave me a little sample, and and after several times of going and and working with him. I, I was really committed to like studying his work and, and working with him. So, uh, you know, he told me the steps that I needed to take. Uh, um, this is about two years of work with him. Almost, um, I would say more than 900 tests for everything that, uh, uh, he's taught me and, and I'm bringing this practice into my office and I'm sharing it with you. So let's get into this. What is post-concussion syndrome? Well, we, are, we all kind of have an under, understanding of what a concussion is, right? We just don't know how devastating a concussion is. Um, uh, we've all had issues when we've hit our head. I know I did. I, I dove into a pool. Uh, back in the days, in the 80s, there were no helmets learning how to roll, uh, not roll a skate, but skateboard. And uh, I'm clumsy and I was trying to, and um, I, I fell off, fall off trees. I got hit in the head with a basketball so hard, had me like dizzy for days. So I, I, of course I've had an impact. And, um, but we all get up and walk away. The issue is we don't know what it caused later and how it affects us and how it affects our healings so these next several parts I'm going to show you I'm going to talk to you about how an old concussion can actually keep you from being healthy from being focused from uh, succeeding in life really I mean like it was pretty powerful once I got this work done myself my life changed uh, I can't tell you People that personally know me, they've seen what, uh, how I went from really thinking that I'll never be able to grow. It didn't matter how many personal development workshops I did, and uh, Anthony Robbins, and all the books that I was reading, and the coaches. There was some limitations, and I knew it. I just couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. But once I addressed, and once I got my brain fixed, and the ability for my brain left and right side to focus and, and function again, uh, my success really started to take off. And uh, we can definitely see what's going on with that now. So a um, couple of things that you need to know about concussions. Again, we, we, what we're usually told are boxers or MMA or football players. These are the people who have concussions. I think everybody has one form of concussion. Now there's there's five, maybe six factors that lead to a concussion, okay? Uh, one of those things is you had a head injury. And it doesn't take a, a punch. It, it, it could be, you know, you hit your head at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
don't have to go to the hospital, you might not sometimes need paramedics. And just like my son, he hit his head, he had a bump, we, we solved it and everything went away. I remember growing up and you know, somebody was batting and the bat flew and whacked this other guy in the head. I mean, these things happen all the time, especially to your children, right? So you'll see them like head bumping in the, in the jumpies and all of these things, soccer. Oh my God, um, I'm overlooking Beverly Hills High School and I see these, these kids playing soccer. I tell you, it's intense. Uh, I, hit, I remember hitting the, the soccer ball with my head once. I was out of commission. Like, again, not only was that basketball when I was in high school, but I was trying to play like mid-college uh, or something. And I was like, oh, I try to be really slick with this head bump thing and left my head ringing for days. So any kind of pressure or stress that comes into the head. Now, if you've ever seen a boxer slow-mo, I gotta find this clip, maybe I'll, I'll see what I can do if I can put in this clip. But if you've ever seen a boxer being punched slow motion, you'll see what happens to the skull. It's like a water balloon in slow motion. It just starts to ripple. And it causes a lot of pressure to the brain. And the brain has all these attachments. I'm not the best artist, but. Uh, let's go. That's the side view of the brain. Hope I look a little alien there, right? And the brain, uh, has some space between itself and the skull, right? That's the eyes, right? Something like, something like that. Again, not the best artist. But then it has all of these attachments that kind of, it's called these meninges, that keep the brain kind of strapped in, right? So there's some liquid in here. There's some, some areas that are holding the brain in place. And so when we get hit, forward or backwards, it sends a shock wave throughout the skull. So it's not always where you got hit, it's but where the shock wave ends. So if you've ever seen a tsunami, right, you can see where the earthquake, remember the tsunami that happened in, in uh, Japan, right? And then where that wave of water ends up causing a lot of damage. So when these come either from behind or the side back it starts to send a ripple in through the brain and it starts to cause an effect all right so uh, again it could be a fall it could be um, uh, uh, it can be a, a fall it could be kids playing around with a bat it could be uh, that you got up and you hit your head. I mean, it happens all the time. Falling off a horse. Uh, what else did I got? I got falling out of a, a tree, falling off uh, down some stairs. Doesn't matter. You just need to have an impact. And there's an impact, just enough force, just enough to cause that ripple. Okay, so that's one of the, the main ways is a, a concussive physical force. Uh, the second one, believe it or not, this is a this this is a, a really important to know. Another concussive force to the brain can be stress. Um, so if you've ever said like, "Wow, I, I," you know, we call it a nervous breakdown, right? A nervous breakdown. Uh, maybe when you've just fried your, you know, if you, if you honestly said, man, my brain is fried, you've actually caused uh, another force uh, of stress into the brain, right? So uh, uh, emotional concussions, like uh, death, maybe near death, like, man, I almost died, right? Uh, back in the day, we used to call it shell shock, all these military, PTSD, all of these things could cause some level, PTSD being super, super high, to just like maybe super stressed at uh, career, health, family. I mean, another one, you know, I had another patient in here where I tested, I'm like, wow, you have something very severe, any physical, nope, nothing physical, 
I said, the, the amount of stress that your brain has taken on is like equivalent to not just a, like a loss of a parent, this is loss of a child. I, I, would, rec I would say it's a loss of a child. And his jaw dropped and uh, he's been with me for a while and, and he's like, I, I've never told you that I lost my, one of my children in a drunk driving accident um, nine years ago. Even though he's emotionally recovered, that concussive force has done some kind of work into his brain. So we have physical stress, concussed stress in one area. We have emotional stress. Um, we have chemical stress. There are certain things out there that cross the blood-brain barrier that actually have a massive effect on the brain. We know certain drugs that we take on a regular basis, like things like Ritalin and Adderall, affect our brain. They're, 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 they're there to affect our brain, right? That's what they're used for. And they can cause some effect. We know that uh, certain things like anesthesia or uh, getting the flu shot, certain chemicals for certain people will have a concussive effect on their brain. And we're going to go deeper into those in just a second, but I'm just covering what it could be. Let's talk about, um, those are, those are again, those, that's medicine right there. So let's talk about drugs that are recreational that still mess with our brain. So we've all heard these things about ecstasy and MDMA having effects on our brain, right? So ecstasy, MDMA, hallucinogenic drugs, they affect our neuro, the receptors in the brain. They're, they're doing things. Uh, great, if you have, feel like you have a greater experience to the universe, that's awesome. It's not what I'm getting into. What I'm getting into, it's causing some kind of a concussive syndrome into the brain, okay? So we have physical force, emotional force, uh, medical use medication and recreational use drug and the, the, the last one could be actually bacteria or viruses right when we get meningitis really causes stress on the brain you know if you don't get treated fast enough you could die so these are things that are forces onto the brain and uh, and uh, exactly how you could have a concussion now what does that all mean and how can this help you get better, right? I had to go in a little detail in all of these. Now what I've noticed that, again, we're dealing with this part of the spinal cord and uh, when we adjust patients, we were getting a lot of great results. But my question was, well, why can't these patients hold their alignment? Well, what is going on? It doesn't matter how much I uh, have seen this patient, certain things are still not getting better and I had about a 20% um, rate that just was not improving. It didn't matter what I would do. They were still getting all of these symptoms, kidney issues, ulcers, and I just I couldn't have that. But once the more I studied uh, this work, the more I went into this, the more we figured this out of how this works. So I'm going to give you a simplified answer of what concussions do to certain parts of the brain what multiple concussions do and uh, if you hang tight I'm going to share with you what I think I believe that is the cause of so many I'm not going to say all but everything I've linked back all the diseases that people have autoimmune syndromes I believe it's just my theory that they're based on concussions now uh, again, I've been dealing with this for about 25 years, so I'm looking to understand, well, why would the body, when we say autoimmune, why would the body turn on itself? Like, why is it shutting itself down? There's no answer. And so a theory of mine is when we have all of these concussive forces, all of these areas where the trauma or the force has kind of ended up are areas that control your body, lungs, okay? So we know that the brain controls all major functions of the body. It tells the body what to do. 
It's not just for thoughts and thinking. It's, it regulates the body. The brain stem regulates the body. It sends signals and it tells them what to do. We can see that because we know when Christopher Reeves, Superman, if you remember him, I got a picture of this. You can see his before picture, right? And you can see after his accident. Now, when uh, after his accident, uh, he was left uh, a quadriplegic, so we knew a small little injury right here in the brain left him without the use of his limbs. Um, it affected his respiratory. He was on a ventilator. He was on, uh, I think, a feeding tube. I think he was on dialysis machine. Everything was controlled by the central nervous system and predominantly the brain area. So we knew that injury had cut off communication between the brain and the body, right? That's why we hang people, all of these weird things, right? So we know that a lot of this areas of the brain affect or tell the body what to do. They, they give us the you know, cerebellum, the ability to walk, to move, uh, telling our heart, liver, lung, what to produce. All of these things, our first response is from the time, sometimes, bad, bad picture, but uh, from the time our eyes see something, that information coming back into the brain and the brain having to figure things out, right? When things come at us and our ability to have balance. So now we have this force and it kind of is like this. So let's say, this is my, this is how I explain it to people. Let's say you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten employees that came and each person had a specific job at your office, uh, at your work, and uh, their job was there. You know, uh, let's say if uh, you're a law office, uh, everybody had a specific file for a specific client. Um, let's say you're a financial advisor, you had a specific group of people that you were taking care of and everybody had their individual chore. So, say this part of the brain controls the lungs, this part of the brain controls the cellular system, this part of the brain controls repair, this part of the brain controls uh, gut, this part of the brain controls, and I'm not talking, we already know that about the areas of the spine. We already know that C3 controls areas of the face, bones, teeth, C6, neck muscles, shoulders, tonsils. We know that about here, but now we're going even higher and in, into the brain, and everybody in the brain has an area that those neurons are, its main job is that one thing. They just focus on one thing. Now, we have a force that comes in and ends up bouncing around and ends up in an area of the brain. We're just gonna, gonna circle this person. And, uh, but, it's not like it's dead, but they come in and they decide, these employees come to work and this person decides, I'm not gonna work today. I'm here, I'm fully functional, but I'm deciding I'm not gonna work. I had an injury and I had this force knock me down. I'm kind of upset today and I'm not gonna do this work. I'm really simplifying and trying to make it fun, but this area of the neuron or neurons decides that it's in shock, right? Now, it has a specific job, all right? And everybody is different. So an injury to one person might show up one way and an injury to another person might show up totally another. And so we have this happening and this goes, and let's say this, this, per, this one is in charge of the lungs. Just pick him, pick him by part. Thyroid, I don't know, you could choose whatever you want. Play, place anything there. Now, it stops working, so suddenly we start to see something happen in the lungs. They start to malfunction. Maybe a bronchitis, maybe uh, constantly every year having some kind of chest or uh, the lung uh, thing going on, post-nasal drip, it's, it's repetitive, right? Now, what happens is the body is smart, so it starts to recruit other neurons to help this lung out. So now you have maybe three other neurons or parts of the brain 
kind of coming in here and helping. Now, here's the thing. Just imagine like if you were working on your files and your, uh, your boss came in and said, hey, you know, I need you to pick up somebody else's slack and I need you to pick up uh, and, and take care of their clients. And you're like, but I don't know their clients. I don't know what their needs are. And, then, and you just start to do the work, but you're not doing it as good as the person that was involved. And so this becomes a compensation for the brain and for the body. Now you're living in comp compensation due to the force that you have caused by one of these five things. And now the lungs never perform at their best. Um, so our goal here, well, I'm gonna give a, 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 another thing. So what did it have to do with the, the, the right and the left? So usually um, we all, we all, I'm gonna show like a, Again, not super great at drawing. I'm gonna show part of the brain here, right? And there's the half, and, and uh, there's another area in the back, it's called the cerebellum, it's a posterior brain, it's usually back in here where the cerebellum is. And, and uh, that's in charge of balance. You know, when you get drunk, you start to lose your balance. That's because all those chemicals have gotten back into the cerebellum, and they're causing all kinds of issues. So we know usually um, if when we do our testing, if a person can't perform certain things to the right, that we have some issues that need to be corrected. They'll cover. Um, wanna, so we're looking at this. I'm going to put right here and left here. Okay. So that have right cellar bellum and left cortex. So what's the left cortex is in charge of? The left cortex is in charge of organization. Left cortex is in charge of operation uh, as far as you know, calendar and analytics. It's the part of our lives that kind of has us planning for the future because it's very structured and organized. What's the right side? It's more creative, artistic, passionate, fun, loving. Again, you got the analytical side on the left and the fun, passionate um, designer creativity on the right. So we're going to have an effect. We're going to have a physical structural effect on one side and inability to kind of work and grow on the other. So this was exactly what I had going on. Uh, now, uh, people who know me knew I love what I do. I was really passionate, but I was limited because I had a hard time running the business, which was very structured. I knew that I loved it and it was great and it was fun. And a lot of you might out there might notice that this part of your brain that is in charge of uh, uh, organization and planning just does not fully function the way you want it to. So uh, this is what we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, this was definitely lacking in me. And, by the time I got these areas of the brain to connect again and getting my brain response back, I start to make planning and organizing and really seeing the future of my practice and my life and my family uh, even easier. So this became much easier. A lot of you might be lacking fulfillment, which is the right side of the brain. You might be super organized. You might be super successful, lots of money, lots of everything that you possibly have, but it doesn't matter how much you have, you're still not fulfilled and you know, things don't make you happy. It doesn't matter. And so that's where this would be flipped, right? You would have a left-sided cerebellum, right side of the brain. So again, coming back to this is Hey, how about if we can get this that's causing something? Now again, I really simplified this. I'm using stick figures for God's sake. So you know, so it's super, super simplified. But we, this could be hundreds of neurons. This could be multiple injuries in different parts of the brain. Uh, the brain remembers everything. That other 90% is recording all the injuries. It keeps you from trying to redo. We had a scenario in our office, and I had a woman that came in here, and she was very young, super sweet, and she was so flared up, and nothing 
chiropractically made sense about it. It just didn't make sense. She came from another chiropractor and I worked on her a little bit, but then I started asking questions. I go, hey, have you ever had a concussion before? And she's like, yes. Well, I don't know if I had a concussion. All I remember was I was snowboarding and then um, I did something wrong. It got stuck and it threw me backwards and I hit my head on to, I guess there was a log or something there, even though she had the helmet on. She was like, I was in a really bad position. I think I got knocked out for at least 30 seconds. My friends came up and they were actually hovering over me when I kind of opened my eyes. So every winter, this was her, every winter around this time, I become literally paralyzed. So let's just get a little bit deeper. The brain here realized that she had a trauma at a specific time of the year doing a certain event, which was snowboarding. So um, the brain is ultra smart. It knows to keep her from re-injuring her brain, it's gonna kind of put her in a place to keep her from going snowboarding because the last time she went snowboarding she possibly might have severely hurt herself or almost killed herself so her body will do things to her to keep her from repeating some of the same events right so this is how powerful it can be it will actually cause another effect to keep us from trying to injure ourselves why? Because the brain wants to keep you alive. So when I hear autoimmune, I have to understand, like, why would the body work so hard to keep you alive then turn on itself? Oh, I got some patience. I'll be right back.